Uh, hello, my name is Adam. I'm a product manager at Windward, and today I'm going to be showing a tutorial on using the Windward Designer to create a basic invoice template. Um, this will be a series of videos. I'll try and keep them pretty short uh, and manageable. And what we're going to try and do is design this output, um, design a template that produces this output document. And uh, you see we have, it's a basic invoice. We have some fun formatting in here. Um, there's a lot you could do to make it more exciting, but this is a great start for us to create an industry standard document. Um, now, before we get started, this tutorial isn't necessarily to cover basic functionality or even to cover, uh, well, yeah, basic functionality. But what you can do is if you come here to Ohana, this is our, our documentation resource. We have lo uh, lots of good documentation here. And then if you click the new user start here, this will bring you to a tool that lets you select your format that you're wishing to design for, as well as a data provider that you're wishing to use. And it'll bring you to a tutorial that walks you through using that template um, designer, in this case, Word that we selected and the data provider that you selected. The template that we're going to be building the invoice, we're going to be using SQL, but the concepts will apply to other data providers as well, uh, especially data providers who have wizards, as they're called in Windward, that help you when you're designing. Um, those would be XML, JSON, OData, and also Salesforce. Um, any of those data providers will use wizards and the tutorial will be fairly similar. So it'd be worth walking through for the formatting experience and also for the, the experience with our tool. Um, on that note, let's get started. So we'll open a new Word document. I have a blank Word document here that I've already saved locally on my machine as Windward invoice tutorial.docx. That's all we've done so far. Um, and we've opened here Word where we have installed the Windward designer. Um, and of course, the Windward Designer is an add-in to Word that allows you to leverage very complicated Word formatting functionality. And all we try and handle on the Windward side is taking your data and putting it into that Word template. Um, and that is what we'll be doing today. So let's start working towards this desired output. Um, and for this first video, what we're going to start with is just formatting this header. Uh, the way that I format this header here and the way we'll do it in our template here is actually using a table. Now a table can be very powerful in your document and allow you to really control formatting throughout the document. And if you remove the table borders, the end user will not even know that it's there. So to start with this, we're going to fill in the same text here, when we're invoice sample. And I'm actually going to make the entire template in Times New Roman. And since this is our header at the top of the page, let's increase the font size on this to make it more stand out. Um, something for this one, I want something that just goes on to two lines. Um, so that looks nice. Now, what we're aiming for, you'll notice, is that we have the title here left justified. And on the other side, we can have the success text um, right justified. Um, so if we start filling this in, success at windward.net, make it start case. Um, and that automatically makes a link, but I'm going to make it not a hyperlink for the appearance. Um, the way I can write justify this in the cell is if I highlight it here, I go to layout, um, I can specify a line in the top right of the cell. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, for the sake of time, instead of typing all of these in, what I'm just going to do is copy and paste. Uh, you're welcome to enter these and include them in your template, or you get the idea. Um, so there we go. So far, so good. Um, looking like what we have here at the top, a nicely formatted title. Uh, but what we need to do is remove the borders on this table. Um, if, we, if we highlight the border like this, what we can do is go to borders here in our table design ribbon. And there's a lot of different settings you can take advantage of here. If I'm removing borders and if I want restricted borders, what I start off by doing is just removing all the borders. And you'll notice that I actually have a setting enabled right now that's called show border grid lines. And you can see that the table is still shown here with the grid lines enabled. Uh, I enable this setting just through the search bar here. If you type in view table, you see it brings it up here, view table grid lines. 
And if you turn that off and on in the template, it will remove or reveal those grid lines, whether or not the table borders are actually shown. So now we see more of what we're expecting to see in our output. A nice title, some help text uh, for users who need to get in touch with our success team, and no table grid lines to review that we're doing this in a table. Now, something you'll want to know when you're working with tables like this, uh, in general with tables, not just like this, is that you can alter the location of the table. I'm going to turn my show table grid lines back on so you can see exactly where this table is. You can alter the location of this table in the document in line by entering or deleting text above. This will work, you know, if you have paragraphs. Paragraphs here, uh, so on and so forth. Windward works very well with this when the table is in line. So Windward knows this table is after the paragraph here and before the paragraph here. If you do drag this table using this selector, using this uh, thing here that you can drag, I'm not sure what to call that. Um, what this does is it turns this table into something absolutely positioned in the document, and it makes it very confusing to the windward add-in where this table actually exists in the scheme of the document. It becomes unclear whether it's before or after these paragraphs. So if you do need to alter the location of the table in the document, it's suggested that you do so. Our paragraph has gone altogether now, I guess. Um, it's preferable that you do so by changing the... <laughs> this is an example of how problematic this can be. I was hitting Control-Z and Control-Y to try and bring it back or, or get back to where I was, but it's totally gone now. So it's preferable that you only ever change the location in the template of the table by inserting text before or removing text after. You can do new lines, you can do section breaks, but don't drag the table manually. My, my grid lines are here, let's do view table grid lines. Oh dear, what has happened? This is the downside of a candid demo like this. Hello? Bear with me. Well, I seem to have lost my cursor completely. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start a new document. Oh wait, something happened. Okay. I'll start a new document. I don't see any paragraph marker in here at all. So uh, interesting start to the demo. Okay, well, we'll start up a new document. Instead of repeating those steps, what I do is I actually have the same table here in the output. I'm gonna copy and paste it into our template and save, and we'll be back to where we started. Um, I'll save in documents, and I'm gonna overwrite the template that we were using before, Windward Inverse Tutorial. Oh, it's open. All right. Okay, wonderful. Hopefully the first and the last hiccup. So point stands. <laughs> Don't drag these tables. That ended poorly. Um, it seems like Word itself can't handle that very well. Uh, so we'll, we'll let that remain in line. All right. Back to our templating experience here. Um, the last thing we'll do in this video, we're just getting a start here. We've uh, set up our header. Um, we'll use this table method of, of formatting data in a table. You can see a dot here in a paragraph there. Those are being indicated because I have um, this show hide enabled. So we'll stop showing those. But we'll be using this table method for formatting our document a lot in this template, and we'll be adding and removing borders like that. Uh, this is a very powerful tool that we'll be taking advantage of. Uh, the last thing we'll do before finishing this first demo in the series, um, please stay tuned for the next one, is connecting to our data. So the same data source that I actually have in my recent inactive section, if you've been using the tool, you'll be seeing data sources here that you've been using recently. Um, I'm going to connect to the same data source, but I'll create a new connection. I already have an MSSQL and an MSSQL1, so I'm going to do an MSSQL2. First thing I'll do is I'm gonna go over here and select the data provider that my data is coming from for this data source, it's SQL Server. I'm gonna call this MSSQL2. And this is a public 
demo data uh, source that you can use that Windward has offered. So we'll connect to it, mssql.windward.net. And it's the Northwind demo database. And the credentials for this are demo demo. It's a good practice to test your data connection first before we connect to it. We see connection succeeded, uh, success so far. And then we'll go ahead and add this data source and Voila, we have an active data source MSSQL2 connected to our template. Notice that before the data source is connected, we have a yellow uh, triangle here. Once we connect this, this will change to a green go um, data has been connected. And also we have the data bin open automatically. Um, and I think that's where we'll leave off this tutorial. Please stay tuned for the next tutorial. Um, we'll have a series of these all fairly short and manageable. So you can continue with them at your pace. Right now, the only Windward functionality we've gotten used so far is our data source connection, but the next tutorial, we'll start using Windward tags to bring dynamic data into our template along with the static formatting. Um, if you'd like to look at the start here resources before we continue on to more advanced tutorials, please find those in linked in the description as well as uh, a link to our Ohana documentation page here where you can find lots of great documentation and other beginner training courses um, that will dive more into specific tools. For this tutorial, we'll just be going over how to get from point A of an empty template to this point D, or sorry, not point D, step some, skip some points in there, point B um, output uh, with a good looking invoice sample here. So stay tuned. Thank you.